Hi, hey, gents, Carl here with Tactical Rifleman, and uh, we, we did a video a while back. It was, we called it uh, my bug out bag. I'm not real big on the term bug out bag. And some people call it a, uh, by definition, it's more of a walk home bag. Uh, me, I just called it my, my red bag of woe. It was the, the bag that I would move from vehicle to vehicle. And uh, anyways, it, it got a lot of comments, a lot of comments. A lot of you guys bash the color of it. But the, the reality is it, it looked very civilian. This, this is it's a diversion series made by Blackhawk. Uh, it has zero reflectors on it. And the cool part about nylon in uh, colors like this is you can always darken them with mud and stuff like that. But the uh, intent of it has camouflage, so nobody's smashing windows out, taking it out of the car. I would move it and my toolbox from vehicle to vehicle, whatever I'm traveling in. It was an insanely long video. I talked about every item that was in my bug out bag, all the way down to my backup IR little blinking light. So if I had to go out away from it, I could hang it from a tree 100 meters off at a set azimuth and it would help me find my way back to my hide site. I got into a lot of detail. The weather's changed. We've got uh, sleet and freezing rain outside right now. We're inside the man cave here on my nice little hill. It's cold outside. Changes in weather, uh, you're going to change what you carry every day. So uh, this video is kind of like an update, a part two. I want to show you guys the changes that I made. I've swapped out a little bit of gear, uh, better gear, a little newer gear. Um, but I've also made a lot of changes due to changes in the weather. Where this one is fine for a pleasant climate. It's nice and warm out. My new bag and other gear that I carry are because, guys, it's cold outside and it's important, right? So, um, gotten away from this bag right here and I've replaced it with another one. Now, everyone's bag is going to be a little bit different, right? Um, whether you're walking home, right? Everybody's worried about the zombie apocalypse or everything, or if it's just a uh, emergency. I use my bug out bag or my get home bag or Carl's red bag of woe. I use it all the time, guys. I, I, I do. I use it now. When you start packing things like this, you need to balance it. Uh, uh, is it nice to have or is it uh, I have to have type item? You need to you need to balance that against what what's really important All right now. What do you need to carry? It's going to be different for you than it's going to be different for me. Knowledge is always going to be your best tool. It's going to be your best weapon. But the more, uh, more knowledge and experience you have, the more you can get by with different items. The less, I don't want to say that you don't need anything. Uh, guys, when it's freezing cold, snow and sleet out there, you need something. You need shelter. You really do. So different environments are going to require different, uh, different equipment plans. And that's why I've modified my bag. Uh, you also need to think, are, are you responsible for others, right? So most of the time, if I'm traveling, my wife comes with me to a lot of my classes now. So we're traveling, whether we're going to a wedding and I'm in a nice suit, right? Um, it doesn't matter. I, if uh, we get into an emergency with the vehicle, slides off the road, whatever, I need to have the clothing so that I can deal with that situation and not necessarily just for myself, but also for anybody else that would be traveling with me. All right, so uh, the greater the knowledge of your environment, the less gear you need to carry, yes, but there's still gonna be some gear that you need to have. When you look at your gear, what, what you're gonna bring with you, layer your gear. Now that starts with your EDC, your, da your daily carry. Yes, everybody's gonna have that concealed carry firearm, all right? Uh, a lot of guys carry knives with them, flashlights, uh, Leatherman tools. Uh, you can carry all that stuff, but that is that is your first layer of gear, what you keep in your pockets. I don't smoke, but I carry a Bic lighter on me. Okay, it's just me layering my equipment. That next layer of gear, that would be what you would have in your office, you know, uh, wherever you're at. If you work from home, fine, okay? But if you work in the city or you work somewhere uh, where you've got an office, you should have some equipment there, right? Power goes out. There are certain things that you need. 
Then you get into your, your vehicle kit. If you, you have a vehicle, you drive back and forth from work. Now, I want you to think cold weather. You might be watching this video uh, middle of summer out in Florida. This part might not really pertain to you, but if you live in Montana, uh, or even let's say you live in nice warm Florida, but you're driving up to Maine to visit your relatives, yeah, you're gonna be in an air conditioned vehicle the whole way, but as you're driving through the Appalachian Mountains, if you're not taking 95, you're taking the scenic route, you are, the potential is there for you to need cold weather gear. You get socked in with a blizzard, something like that. You need cold weather gear. Now, when the temperatures start to drop, right off the bat, I stick a good military grade sleeping bag in every one of my vehicles. I put them in my kids' vehicles, put it in the trunk of the vehicle, and forget about it. If they slide off the road and they're stuck in a ditch, if they get stuck in a snowstorm and they're waiting for the Department of Transportation to come by with the plow, this sleeping bag is gonna save their lives. They don't have to leave the vehicle, they don't have to worry about land nav going anywhere. Sleeping bag will keep them warm inside the vehicle. So that is in my vehicle, easy to have. The other thing I do is, now this, this bag right here, this is just an aviator kit bag. It's a little, it's a large bag. I got that, I got that. But you gotta remember, it's not just packed with my clothing. I've also got clothing here for my wife. So, uh, so right off the bat, I've guys, I've got nice, heavy, insulated boots. I'm planning snow, I'm planning worst case scenario. But it's set up so I have them not just for me, but also for my wife. So there's two sets of waterproof uh, winter jackets in here. There's two sets of waterproof insulated pants. Do you have to go buy them? They're, guys, these are the same clothes that we use for hunting season. Deer season's over with, they get put in here. Now, hand warmers, things like that. The chemical hand warmers, guys, wow, I, you shouldn't need chemical hand warmers. You should know how to start a fire. Uh, guys, I can start a fire by uh, rubbing sticks together. I can get my ember and I can make my tinder bundle. I don't need that. I just need to be able to stay warm. Right? I need to be able to stay warm. Right? Um, so I've got that polypropylene, other things, uh, hats, gloves. This is basic stuff that you guys should all keep in your vehicles. This bag gets moved along with my toolbox from vehicle to vehicle in the winter, or I leave it in the vehicle that I'm gonna be uh, staying with. My, my daughter's got her cold weather gear in the trunk of her car. My son has his cold weather gear set of boots in the trunk of his car. Easy stuff, nothing crazy. This is, this is not rocket science here. Now, when you get into uh, my bag of woe, my red bag of woe, what I move from vehicle to vehicle, Think bare minimum versus nice to have. There's, can you get by with primitive technology? You can, you can, but uh, guys, when the snow's coming down, that's not when I want to be rubbing two sticks together. I would much, much rather be starting a fire with all the modern methods that we have, right? When you start packing your bag, you've got to think the basics. Now, we got deep into the basics in our other video. All right, um, I got all the way down to every item that was in my bag. Every item that was in that other video is still in this bag. All I'm gonna touch on is the stuff uh, that I have changed. Right before I do that though, I'm gonna give YouTube an opportunity to hit us with a commercial. All right, hey, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that commercial. I'm sure it was about some worthless subject that has absolutely nothing to do with this channel. Okay, um, we, when you left, we were talking about the basics, right? Basic survival basics. And, uh, and you find them all over the internet. You've got water. You've got to have a way to haul it, procure it, uh, treat it. Food. Now, yeah, it'd be nice if you could carry a whole uh, 7-Eleven with you, but the reality is if, you, if this is a bag you're going to plan to move with, you need to uh, weigh pros and cons of the weight of it versus nutritional value, but also shelf life. I don't like hauling this stuff in and out of here. Fire, yes, different uh, ways to start fire, but it's not just that. You've got to think not just getting that spark or having that lighter, but you got to think tinder, kindling, and fuel also. Air, everybody takes air for granted, all right, but... Uh, 
I want you to think masks and goggles. Think about when those towers fell at the World Trade Center. Remember all those people covered with the dust? Yeah, guys, uh, I guarantee you every one of those people there wish they had a set of nice goggles on and they wish they had a thin mask. If you've got the current flu pandemic going on, guys, just simple, simple masks. Now remember, this is not just a zombie apocalypse bag. It's not, guys, this is, oh, hey, I need a mask today because that's what they're recommending. Hey, I just happen to have one in my bag. Little things like that. First aid. Now, you guys know I was a special forces medic. So if you want to see as far as what medical gear I carry, exact items and everything, you can go back and watch my individual first aid kit video. You can find it in our video archives. Um, but uh, I, for my personal bag, I carry a little bit more than that. You think about movement. You see, I always carry my last year's um, hiking shoes. When you buy those new ones, put those new ones here. Uh, communications, um, anything from your cell phone, charger for that cell phone, whistles, radios, navigation. Don't always just rely on that GPS. You got to know how to do a compass. You got to carry maps. Again, I covered a, all that stuff in the last video down to what maps I carry, blah, blah, blah. Self-defense. Yeah. Okay. We've got our concealed carry Glock 19 spare mags. Um, but then it comes back down to those situational requirements, right? This bag is a little bit larger than the last one because I have those environmental changes. And then number one is shelter, right? Now, if you look at that big, long list of basics, but basically, guys, what it boils down to uh, is food, water, fire, and shelter. In the wintertime, shelter is most important. Yes, you can always start a fire, but a fighter, fire is not just uh, your end-all, be-all, guys. You, it, you've got to have shelter material. All right, so the bag, this is uh, the uh, Vert's Gamut uh, Overland bag. Uh, it comes in different color variations and everything. I went with the rust and gray simply because uh, a lot of people don't think of gray as a military color. Right? It, it kind of passes as civilian but uh, gray is a great color for quickly modifying to blend in different environments. And while this rust is very similar to the red, again, this is a color that uh, can be found in nature. There's no black on the bag, there's no reflectors, there's nothing crazy on it. Uh, but it also, you notice it doesn't have molly, it doesn't scream, hey, this guy's military. The bag is a little bit larger, but because I'm talking about carrying a little extra weight, because I'm adding uh, because I'm adding more shelter material, this bag has much better um, shoulder straps. It also has a waistband that I keep tucked in here. But it's a good solid waistband. I keep it tucked in because, guys, I'm not walking 200 miles with this bag. Throw it over my shoulder, move it from vehicle to vehicle, no big deal. But if I did have to march with it, it's got a good uh, it's got a good kidney pad waistband that will help take a lot of that weight off of my shoulders. It's ventilated here on the back to let your back breathe. It's got all the good pockets where the pockets uh, need to be. Uh, Vert's put a lot, uh, Vert has put a lot of, uh, a lot of thought into this bag. It's got a lot of great features. I can't say enough about it. Um, but, you know, just let's, let's get inside. I know that's what you're here for, so let me show you what's inside the bag. All right, um, real quick, let's start, well, no, real quick, what's most important to any old ranger, right? Uh, ranger, infantryman, Green Beret, they'll tell you right off the bat, because I got to mention this, your number one thing for everybody is you got to have your whoopee. You got to have that poncho liner. You do. But uh, I, don't, I don't run a poncho liner anymore, guys. What this is, is this is my mountain chirape. Now, it's made out of the same material as a poncho liner, the old military poncho liner, but this one actually has a hood, so you can legitimately wear it underneath a poncho. All right? You can zip up the bottom of it like a sleeping bag. I can use this as a, uh, as a thin sleeping bag, but... Uh, you can wear it under a poncho. The cool part is if it's snow coming down, I can just throw this over the top of me. 
uh, and then put my bag back on. It's right on top where I can quickly get to it, throw my uh, pack back on and I'm moving again. If it starts raining again, right below that is the poncho. I can throw that over the top of this and again, I'm off and moving again, right off the top. Now I, I start at the outside. If I all of a sudden have to move dismounted, right? Cause you're not always gonna be wearing Salmon shoes. Like I mentioned earlier, me and the wife might be going to a wedding or something like that. If I'm in my pair of uh, tan leather Johnson and Murphys, I'm not going to want to walk in that. So what I carry is last year's Salmons. Now, uh, to not waste space, what I do is I fill the inside of them with everything that I immediately want to put inside my pockets. Uh, my Leatherman Surge with the extra bit set, all that stuff. Uh, the flashlight that fits the IR lens that's with the uh, my uh, night vision PVS-14. Yeah, you, I know you guys think I'm mental. Uh, of course, I got my chocolate-covered espresso beans to put in my pockets. Compass, all that other stuff. All that stuff's in here, ready to be put into my pockets, and I'm off and moving again. Now, uh, down bottom here, I have if you've seen my old video, you know I had um, uh, leather gloves. You gotta have leather gloves, you gotta protect your hands. You injure, injure your hand in a survival situation and you just greatly compounded the issues that you have. Now, uh, why did I replace my gloves? Because guys, I use them. I use my bug out bag a lot and I started getting holes in some of the fingers. Okay, replace them. Not only did I replace them with the exact same model and size glove, so I know they fit, I know they work, I'm used to using them, but I also added another set of the same size gloves, but these are insulated. I've got to do heavy work, need a lot of dexterity, I can wear just the leather ones. If I need a little more insulation, same size gloves, uh, just a little more insulation, they don't have leather palms. All right, so I added those gloves to it. As I like having this outside pocket simply because if I'm going to take off my mountain charape or I'm going to take off that jacket, remember I talked about taking stuff out of the vehicle when I leave, I can just stick all that on the outside here. I've got room for this bag to grow for more, more gear, right? So having this, it's, it is, it's awesome. It really is. All right. Uh, next thing I want to cover, I'm going to just unzip the whole bag. The thing I like about this bag is you can unzip it guys and it literally, it, it lays right lays right open. Now I, I mentioned uh, that um, shelter is the top priority because snow coming down, what would you need to survive outside? What you would need besides the sleeping bags is you'd need to have a tent. Literally, you've got to have shelter. Am I gonna add this to this bag? Guys, this bag is already heavy. No, I'm not. You're never going to be, uh, you're, you're just never going to have all the gear that you want. Okay, so what are you going to do? Well, um, traveling, there's buildings everywhere, number one. Sleep in a building, sleep in a barn, sleep in a vehicle. Do you need to have a tent? No, you don't. But let's say you don't have any of that around. What can you use? Uh, you can make debris shelters. Uh, Randy Wurst, our survival instructor, he, uh, I, he has videos showing you guys how to make debris shelters, different types of shelters. Now, can you make a debris shelter out of nothing but debris? Yes, you can, but it's nicer to have good stuff. Now, my other video, I always carried one of the snug pack stashes, all right? Um, it's great. It's basically a uh, ultra thin tarp. It's, it's got the grommets around the sides. It comes with the strings for running the guidelines and everything. Um, it's awesome for making shelters. It's cool. I carry one of them year round. In the winter time, I add a second one, all right? What this does is it'll, it gives me a lot more latitude for making shelters, emergency shelters very fast, but it also uh, will make making debris shelters a lot easier. How do you haul all those debris, all that debris? You can pile it on top of one of these and haul it to where you've already started the shelter with the other one. All right, now, um, if you're not familiar with the stash, uh, guys, basically it is the same size 
as this cheap tarp uh, that you can buy anywhere. If that's all you can afford is a cheap tarp, that's fine. But this thing rolls up about three times the size of this. So by spending a little extra money getting the uh, getting gear that I know works for me, what it, what it does is it allows me to carry two in much less room than just carrying one regular tarp. All right, so I carry my two stashes. In addition to that, I mentioned that the Mountain Sharape can be zipped as a sleeping bag. Now it's not a thin sleeping bag and it's not waterproof. This is a Gore-Tex sleeping bag cover. It's made to go over that big uh, sleeping bag, but uh, it's just a cover for it. In addition, I carry basically one of uh, two of those emergency blankets that's already in the shape of a mummy bag. They're basically tin foil. They reflect the body heat in. You got to have body heat to reflect. Add the hand warmers to it. And guys, even if you don't have time to build a debris shelter, Gore-Tex cover on top of that with this on the inside, throwing a couple of hand warmers. And I don't care if you're soaking wet from, from falling through the ice, this will save your life. Shelter, and it's not that thing right there. Before we go on, I'm gonna let YouTube hit us with one more commercial. All right, welcome back. All right, hey, um, busy? Right, there's a lot of stuff going on in this bag. Uh, and again, everything, uh, guys, we don't want a six hour video. Everything, if you really want to see down to every little item, go back and watch the old video. Literally, I'm not doing that again, I'm really not. Um, one of the cool features of this bag is it's got this big ninja handle on the side right here. And what, it, what it's designed to do is you can spin the bag around on your front, quickly rip this thing open, and it allows you to get to your pistol. That's okay, but I'm going to be drawing my, his, my pistol off of my hip. So uh, what I use the back pocket for is, uh, I, I, I call it my pioneer tools. And basically, um, what I've done is I actually added a ballistic insert. Uh, it's level 3 alpha armor, and... Uh, it weighs nothing, guys. It literally weighs nothing, but it gives the bag a little bit of protection. So if I was just uh, off of one shoulder, spin it around in front of me, and with this pocket right here that's designed for like your luggage, put the handle of your suitcase throw there, what it also allows you to do is run your hand through it and basically wear it as a shield, hold it with the plate in front of you. Like I said, they put a lot of thought into this uh into this bag here uh, other stuff that i keep in here now i mentioned shelter's important shelter is the number one priority right so other stuff that i carry in here is uh a hatchet this is the one made by gerber now randy recommends this one right um i, I added duct tape to the handle because it's it's duct tape, you never have enough, enough of it. But it also has a saw that you can remove out of the handle. Now, I still carry my Sierra saw with me, but again, in a survival situation, if you're having to make, a, uh, make shelter, you're gonna, need, uh, guys, you're, you're gonna need to cut more than one tree. A saw will always be better, but when you're talking about shaving limbs and making a debris shelter, uh, you just can't beat a hatchet for some stuff. Uh, of course, my field knife that I would put onto my belt. Uh, this is the exact same knife that's on my body armor. Uh, so I'm used to it. I know where the handle is in the dark. Uh, it, I'm very, very familiar with using this knife right now. Uh, and then in the bottom, I have my three extra magazines of ammo for my pistol. Yes, I got my ready mag. I've got my mag in the gun. This is three more extra mags uh, for me to get home. So uh, that's carried right there. Now, as for inside, uh, what to go over first? Uh, uh, first aid kit, yes. But uh, one of the other things I added uh, that I changed from the last video, you guys had asked, some of you had asked why I carry gaiters. I carry gaiters because, as you can see, I don't run high hiking boots. I had an uh, Achilles, uh, Achilles tendon injury 
doing combatives. A guy put me on a good lock on my Achilles tendon and it has bothered me ever since. So even in the summertime, I'll run short gaiters because it keeps all the burrs and needles from getting in the ankles of my pants. Um, these are great. However, in the wintertime, uh, rain running down a poncho, these are not tall enough. So part of the winter changing bags is I swap them out with a, a uh, taller set of gaiters by just adding six extra inches to the length of these gaiters. Basically the, the mountain Sharape or my, uh, my poncho that I'm wearing comes down and overlaps the rain comes down, does not go under these and sheds it off of my shoes. So I added longer gaiters to it. I, I still carry the um, emergency repelling equipment. If you're curious how to repel with, uh, this is not 550 cord. I do not condone repelling with 550 cord. This is uh, Spectraline. It's rated for over 2000 pounds, guys. Uh, a, the, a small figure eight and a uh, carabiner. If you're interested on how to do emergency repels with this, uh, we have a video on it. You can find it in our video archive. Water treatment stuff. Uh, that's basically what this pouch was in. Now, the other video, because all my equipment runs off of AA batteries, I chose a, even my, even my PVS-14 runs off of AA batteries. My flashlight runs off of AA batteries. So what I do, what I did was I have re, a recharger and I carry rechargeable AA batteries. My other bag, I carry a solar panel. Okay, solar panel's great. Solar panel's still good to have. But guys, you can look outside right now. We haven't had a sunny day here in two or three days. It's completely overcast. That would be worthless doesn't weigh anything, I'll carry it, but what about if I still need to recharge my batteries? Now, uh, ask your kids. Their ki your kid's cell phone dies, so what do they carry? They carry those little brick uh, rechargers for their cell phones. It's the same thing, except I need to be able to plug it in the here. This is actually a small battery, uh, uh, small battery bank for charging these things. It runs like a flashlight and everything. Cool, nice to have. I, but I thought about adding a couple of those uh, uh, extra battery cells so I could charge this stuff. And the more I thought about it, I'm already taking stuff from my vehicle. What I ended up doing was I ended up just taking the battery cell that I keep in my vehicle. a Little bit bigger than the cell that you're running. This one's made by, it's called Rugged Geek. All right, guys, this is 12 volt, but it's also gives you a thousand amps, All right? It's not gonna burn out my recharger. It, this, will, this, uh, this will feed this, All right? Um, I'm not gonna burn out in my batteries, but I can charge that thing over and over and over and over again. The other cool part about this is remember, don't just think zombie apocalypse walking home. This is the bag I move from vehicle to vehicle. I can literally, I can literally plug this in and jump vehicles with it. Plug it in, turn it the correct way, Carl. And guys, I can jump a vehicle with this. Does it work? Yeah, it works. It works. Could you figure this out? My wife can figure this out. Red one goes to the red terminal, black one goes to the black terminal. Turn it on, push start, and jump back in the vehicle. It works. How do I know it works? Well, because guys, uh, I've helped guys in parking lots jump a couple vehicles that were dead. Um, I've used it on all the lawnmowers and the Bobcat that runs off a of diesel out here on my property. It works. Now, as far as extra uh, cables that I stick in there, it's the charger. Plug it in the wall. And the, nine, uh, the uh, cigarette lighter. You plug them in and I have got lots of opportunities to recharge my battery cell. Guys, this thing is not very heavy and it doesn't weigh a lot. The more I think about it, I don't know why I don't carry it year round, 
but uh, I, I, I keep one of these in my, my daughter's car, son's car, my wife's car. Um, I just don't know why I didn't do it. I got it now. I got it now. So uh, I don't need to use the solar panel. That right there will allow me to charge my AA batteries. All right. um, other pouches, stuff that I, that I need to be able to get into. Of course, I've got my coffee. Of course, I got my body glide. Uh, this is a different one. Why? Because, honest, I'll be running classes and I'll run out of body glide. If you've never tried body glide to keep from uh, being chafed, guys, I'm here to tell you, you'll have it in your briefcase, I promise you. So I add all that stuff to it. I, the, the film crew is telling me I, I'm long-winded. I already knew that. But uh, we're going to take one more break. All right, so my other bag, uh, as far as food went, I was carrying uh, the, the different types of bars that are basically, they're, they're lifeboat food. They're shelf-stable. They stay forever. 6,400 calories in one block. And I'd carry two of them. That's fine, but in the, uh, in the winter when it's cold outside, you need more calories, and you don't always just want to eat stuff that doesn't taste good. So what I did was I have the main meals from basically six MREs that I like. The cool part about having 50 cases of MREs is I can grab just the stuff that I like, and uh, I, I carry that stuff. Now, um, the awesome part about having these great pockets is – you can put things, make for easy access. For example, the, the one outside pocket on this side, I've got my stainless steel Nalgene bottle with everything in it. I keep it filled. Again, go watch the, the, the other video. You can find it in our video archive. But on this side, quick, uh, quick pull, and this pulls out basically my uh, trauma kit right away. So it's got... Uh, Combat gauze, the quick clock gauze, uh, all kinds. Now you'll notice I add hemostats to it. I was a special forces medic. I've treated gunshot wounds. Hell, I've even delivered five babies. All right. So when it comes to clamping vessels, it's you got to know the location of the vessels. All right. But if you got the skills, hemostats, uh, needle drivers, suture material, stuff like that. I carry a lot of extra medical gear in this pouch and I leave the red tag out, uh, make it easier for me to just basically pull and pull it down and pull right out into my hand. Um, I added an extra set of lenses for my uh, glasses. The reason why I want to mention that is I went back and my prescription actually changed in, my, in uh, one of my eyes. I had the lens replaced in my other one. You don't have to worry about that eye, but this one, the prescription changed again. So I just want to remind you to update. Uh, you, you need to update that stuff. You really do. Now, um, as far as the top pocket, this is the stuff you, you, you guys really need to get to all the time. So the top pocket zips right open on this thing. And... Um, Right off the bat, and I want to—I mentioned it last time, but I, I can't stress this enough to everybody. This is just a little Ziploc bag, and what it has is a piece of paper. And guys, this is—it's not an inventory list; it's just a list of the things that I need to check. Because the reality is, you can't just throw this in the trunk of your car and never check it. So what I do is, on the back, I write the date that I last checked the bag. And when I look at this thing and I go, oh shit, I haven't checked it since November, 2019. Hmm, okay, I need to check everything that's on it. Why? Because drugs have uh, expiration dates. I carry drugs, I do. Uh, my food has expiration dates, my batteries, my lights, all these things you just, it doesn't take long to test it. Make sure your PVS 14 works if that's what you're carrying. It doesn't take long, but if you don't keep track of it, you'll quickly lose track of it. And so it's a little piece of paper. And all I do is I just write the dates. Uh, no, no big deal. This same pouch is the one that I keep uh, my drugs in. I'm old, I'm 52, so. Uh, everything from baby aspirin, Imodium, Tylenol, Ranger Candy, your uh, 800 milligram Motrin's, uh, Benadryl, all that stuff. Uh, guys, I even carry uh, a Z-Pack, antibiotics. 
uh, more lighters, chapstick, all that stuff. That's in this pouch right here. Now, um, I'm big on carrying lots of different ways to start fires. My PVS-14, you guys have already seen that. Um, I've got everything from magnesium fire starters, the stormproof matches, uh, extra tinder. Now, when you start talking about the, your guys will carry uh, cotton balls with petroleum jelly on them, that's fine. But uh, people will have actually mentioned instead of using petroleum jelly, use like bacitration or something like that, a antibacterial ointment, because that way you can use it for treating wounds. Yes, but I want you to take it a step further. Instead of just using uh, bacitration or erythromycin gel uh, to treat those cotton balls, use it with a uh, topical antibiotic that is rated to be ophthalmic. In other words, you can actually use the gel in your eyes. This is important because as a SF medic, I, uh, moving around in the dark, I have treated a lot of operators for corneal abrasions and to treat that, any injuries around the eyes, you want to have uh, a gel that you're allowed to put in the eye. So make sure you get one that's rated uh, for ophthalmic use. It doesn't cost any more, but you, and you can still use it on cuts on your skin and stuff, and you can still use it to start fires. Why would you not carry something that's good for three purposes instead of one? Lan uh, candles, why, of course, because Randy teaches all of us, you've got to carry... Uh, candles now something else i got from randy and because i'm big on modern survival gear guys this is a and I, I still carry bic lighters but this is a rechargeable lighter it runs off of electricity it, it's the same mini usb port that i charge my other stuff off of so that one cable that i carry for everything it still works but uh this is flameless it Guys, you can touch paper to it, the stuff lights, and it's not going to blow out. Um, the blue indicator says it's still charged fine. Uh, it, it's even got a light on the back, right? If you really want to freak out the film crew, you can hit them with the strobe, use it in the club, right? But uh, you'll get thousands of fire starts out of it. I, I haven't had to recharge it yet. I'm still messing with it. Right? Um, good piece of kit. Of course, my little Petzl headlamp. I mentioned uh, the um, petroleum uh, cotton balls with the ophthalmic ointment on it. Uh, hand sanitizer, why? Hand sanitizer. But also, guys, hand sanitizer is awesome for starting a fire, it really is. Awesome for starting a fire. Now, this was the pocket that I used to keep my iridium cell phone in. Now, iridium cell phones are great, especially when you're out kayaking and you're in an area that you have no cell phone coverage. Pull the antenna up and guys, you can talk, you get cell phone coverage. Uh, I've actually pulled this out of my kit. Now, I recommended you guys in the last video, it's a company called the, the uh, Geo X. Uh, what it is, is basically it's a little GPS pager, basically got a button that if you need to send an SOS signal, you can, but so long as it's turned on, your family members, while you're off on your safari overseas, they can track your movement. You can send them, you've got a button you can push to send them a pre-recorded message, basically, hey, I'm okay. Uh, it's okay, but I never carried that. I would carry the Iridium because it allowed me to uh, talk send texts, do all that stuff. The more I thought about it, the cost of just activating this thing is hundreds of dollars and then you're, you've only got so many minutes. I wanted something more economical for our viewers out there, but also for me because I'm retired now. I'm a former action guy. I don't make all the money I used to. So I've retired this and I've replaced it with Guys, this is called the GeoSpot X. Now, it's slightly, just ever so slightly larger than the GeoSpot. But uh, you'll notice it's got a complete keyboard down it. Now, it still has your SOS button covered. So if you get in that landslide or that avalanche, and as you're rolling down the button or down the mountain, literally hit the button, 
and it will send the SOS beacon out, right? But uh, you, you pay the small fee to activate it, kind of like you would a cell phone, but it's not that much a month. And basically you get hundreds of texts. I can't talk with this, right? But I've used it out kayaking. So long as you can get a, uh, a semi-clear view of the sky through the trees, it's only got to pick up a couple of satellites to identify your location. I have sent text messages to this. It does not need to go to another one of these. It goes to any cell phone out there. So you can still get texts. Carl, when are you going to be back from kayaking? Oh, shit. Beep. I can reply back, and my wife just gets it on a regular cell phone. Right? So it's a great addition. Uh, if I'm going to be running with this bag, uh, just or when I'm out in the woods, I take this out of this bag, out of the vehicle, and I clip it onto the shoulder strap of whatever bag I'm out there running with. You guys have seen my mountain shirapi bag that I run around with when I'm out kayaking. I pull this out. I pull my fire starter stuff out with me, a couple other things, and they actually go with me in my other bag. All right, so I'm training with my gear. Um, I got a couple more things to show. So I'm going to stop for one more commercial. All right, hey, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that commercial as much as I did. All right, um, I, I got a lot of stuff in there. Like I said, if you want to see it all, go watch uh, the other video. Uh, if um, I, I do listen to your comments, though. There were some comments on the other video. Hey, Carl, uh, why don't you carry your passport and other identification? I, why don't I carry my passport? Because this is America, America. I don't need a passport, guys. So this is not the zombie apocalypse. And even if it was, this is America. I don't need my passport, guys. Now, decent suggestions, uh, carrying money, currency, stuff like that. Guys mentioned rolls of quarters for vending machines. Uh, that's fine. I, I'm not going to get into how much money I carry in my vehicles on me and in my bag. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm not going to go down that. I don't want you guys smashing all my windows out. That's just crazy stuff. Now, uh, one thing I do want to mention, I mentioned it in the last video, is this is an empty bag, guys. It's a compression sack. You see it's got straps for attachment. It's, a, it's got a zipper on it. It's empty. Why would I carry this? I carry this because it's important. Uh, this is for, remember, when am I grabbing this bag? Right? I'm grabbing it out of my vehicle, I'm grabbing it out of my office. But if you're leaving your office or you're leaving your vehicle, there's going to be stuff in your office or in your vehicle that you're going to want to take with you. You can attach this empty bag to the outside of your bag and it allows you more room to carry extra stuff. So I, I think that's important. I think it's neglected by a lot of people. I, I really do. Right, um, I did swap out my other PVS-14 for another one that's got a better tube in it. It's still Gen 3. Um, this one is Ghost White Phosphor. I'm not saying that makes it any better or anything, uh, but it's got a clearer tube than my other one. Um, how do I know that? Because I train with my gear. I do night shooting classes. I bring all my nods out and I bust out the one from my actual kit. And that's the one that I use a lot. And I was like, why do I have the bad one? And one of my students has a better one than me that I lent to him. So I keep my good PVS-14 uh, in, in the kit here. Well, I mean, it's just good stuff. Now, um, guys, that about wraps up everything that I changed. So basically everything that was in my red bag of woe before, uh, it's all still in here. All that I've added is basically more stuff for the elements for my change in that environmental condition. All right, it's colder here in the winter. So I've got the, ex I've added the mountain shirape, a little more insulation, uh, and I've added uh, extra stuff to help me build shelters. I've swapped a couple items for better items, pro or con, your own opinion. But uh, the one thing that I'm always gonna have on me is my cell phone. Now people neglect your cell phone but that cell phone is literally, it's, it's not just a phone, it is a, it's a handheld computer. Right? Now, I got bashed in the last video because you guys are saying, wow, you, you're not gonna be able to use your cell phone because the EMP is gonna knock it out. This is not the zombie apocalypse, right? One, and two, 
do your research, right? Quit just reading all the sci-fi novels out there. Yes, if a EMP detonates over the center of the US, all the electrical grid goes down because they're grounded. All the wire connecting the poles is basically a huge antenna for that EMP, right? But your cell phone, unless it's plugged into the wall, is going to survive the EMP unless you're right there at ground zero one, right? Uh, literally, it's going to be fine, right? It's your cell phone is better shielded than you think it is. I right? think of all the women rubbing those thighs together, wearing nylons, all that static electricity. Your cell phone is ground uh, is uh, shielded better than you think it is. All right, now, as far as my uh, conspiracy theorists out there that say, well. The NSA can track you by your cell phone. One, that's not a bad thing necessarily if you're in an emergency situation, if your car slid off the mountain while you're driving home for that family reunion. But two, guys, it doesn't work uh, as easy as you think it does. You can power your cell phone off. You can put it in airplane mode. You can do all this. Conserve the batteries. I don't really care about the cell phone, right? The, but I like that it is a no joke handheld computer. I don't know everything and I don't remember everything, but what I do know is knowledge is power. So I have got a library of great books, uh, reference manuals, uh, on not just military tactics, but survival, but even the whole uh, wildfire series of books, there's so much great information out there uh, where there is no doctor, where there is no dentist. These are great books that are on the shelf. Wouldn't it be great to have in a survival situation? All these books are available on Kindle. Download them, have them on that handheld smart computer that you got in your pocket. Geological survey maps. I like apps like Gaia GPS, right? Because I can use those geological survey maps on my, now don't get me wrong, I still carry a hard copy of whatever part of the US I'm gonna be in. In this case, Southern United States, right? In, in case my phone completely dies, still got compasses. I actually carry two compasses, but if I've got my phone, Gaia GPS is awesome. It doesn't need a cell phone signal and it doesn't need a GPS signal. Great to have. Other great apps, Life360. My wife and daughter just went on a cruise, on a cruise ship down through the Caribbean and I was able to watch them on that app. It's good in 12 countries, but it's, I, I literally could see where they were at. All right? That's how accurate it is. All right? This can be used as a backup communication between different people in your group. If they're in your group on uh, Life360, it can actually help you do link-ups. Right, so I can't say enough about just having this stuff in your cell phone. Right, so again, when you start planning what you're gonna have, there are certain considerations that you need to take into consideration. Number one is the balance of that bag. These bags get heavy when you start adding stuff to it. All right, so where do you place that? Heavier items, if you put them towards the top of your pack, uh, gives you a higher center of gravity. Now, if you put heavier items towards the bottom of your pack, it gives you a lower center of gravity, but it's gonna make you bend over more. Pros and cons. Now, where does this really matter? If you're walking and you're just hiking on level ground or a trail, put your heavier gear towards the top of your pack. This allows you to stand straight up more at better, uh, better posture and it's more comfortable to move. But if you're gonna be crawling or let's say cross country skiing, rock climbing, going over rough terrain, you want a lower center of gravity so you're less likely to fall, put the heavier gear towards the bottom of your pack. Sounds silly until you've fallen while doing rock climbing and a lot of cross country stuff. Can you only put it in one spot? No. Change it, stop, move the heavier stuff to the top or move the heavier stuff to the bottom and you can literally adjust where that center of gravity is. One thing to keep in mind. Another thing, I mentioned I carry stuff for my wife when she's traveling for me. Think family bags. If you've got two people, why would I carry everything for her? Make her, make her carry her own fair share, right? Now, so a separate bag for her. Two is one and one is none, yes, but do you need to carry both of everything? No, you don't. So if I'm carrying a hatchet and a saw, fine, I'll take the heavier one, I'll give her the lighter saw. First aid kit, 
Everybody should be carrying first aid equipment, right? But does my wife need to carry the suture material? She's not going to use it. She's not. So heaven um, forbid we get split up. I've got the stuff that only I can use. But meds, clothing, have her carry the meds that are specific to her. I carry the meds that are specific to me. Food, split it down the middle. If she wants to eat it, she's going to carry it. All right? Now, camouflage. I mentioned why I go with colors on the bags. I mentioned why I, I, my cold weather clothing is the way it is. When I camouflage this bag inside my vehicle, here's how I do it. Guys, this is a garbage bag from my kitchen, literally. That's exactly what it is. Clean trash bag, never been used. Right, I'm on like my fifth one now because I'll put the whole bag inside of this trash bag, pull it tight at the handle so I can still lift it. Somebody might smash the window out of your car to steal your book bag. Somebody might smash the window out of your car to take your computer bag. Nobody's smashing the window out of your car to steal a bag of trash that's in the back seat. They're not doing it. This is urban camouflage for my bag while I'm not carrying it. If I need a darker color, the inside of this bag is black. White on one side, gray on the other. It's even scented. I love this thing. Like I said, uh, folds up real flat, stick it back in the outside pocket again, and you'll never need it. You'll never need it. Um, when you tear it too bad, Throw it away and get another one. It's a trash bag. Doesn't cost you anything. So anyways, that's me camouflaging it when I'm not being used. All right. Now I hear guys say, "Well, call. I don't need a. I don't need this get home bag simply because I carry a gun. I'm gonna just take what I want." Yeah. When your car slides off the road into the ditch, you you let me know how how much that gun is helping you there. I want to see how much that gun is keeping you warm while you're while you're sitting there in a the ditch by yourself. Yeah, good luck with it. I carry a gun. I got it, right? But uh, you saying you're going to go around and just take everybody else's stuff. Uh, one, that's not very Christian of you. But two, uh, good luck taking my shit because I'm going I'm to burn you down, right? So the gun is not a cure-all for everything. Guys, uh, can you survive? Right? That, that's, it's easier said than done. So knowledge is power. Uh, Knowledge is going to be your best weapon, obviously, but it can also be a great tool to have in your favor. But if you don't have the equipment and the knowledge to know how to use it, you're going to find yourself hurt and you're going to find yourself miserable. And uh, you're not just screwing your, yourself. Potentially, you're screwing the loved ones that are there with you in that situation. That's right, so on a final note. I just want to mention special ops units spend more money on training than they do on equipment. I want that to sink in, right? Because our, we've got the best guns, we've got the best air, aircraft, best equipment, best optics, but we spend more money on training than we do on equipment. So anyways, uh, get out there, get the training, get the classes. Go take one with Randy Rawhide Worse at Worst Case Scenario Survival. And I, I'm here to tell you, he will teach you how to use all this stuff and more. Uh, so big shout out to our sponsors again and our patrons, especially uh, Sportsman's Guide, uh, where you can find a lot of this great stuff here. You want links to the rest of it? Go to tacticalrifleman.com. We've got gear lists at our Amazon store, but we also have a separate page, uh, page that lists companies we love, and uh, you can find promo codes and links to a lot of this equipment there. So that's all we got for this week. I appreciate you hanging out with me for two and a half hours. Y'all take care, shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything. If you like the shirt that we're wearing in the video, you can get it in our store.